Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present uh, my project. This is a project I did the NCP's lab in the ISTA in Austria. And I will show you two novel roles of the zipperfish during gas, uh, uh, sorry, uh, not also the acronym to zipperfish gastulation. And we all know that cell migration is fundamental to development. In many organisms, cells originate far away from the final destination. I have to reach this position often following extracellular cues. My cells don't only, not only need to know where to go, they also need to know where and when to stop. And recent data has shown that excessive environment is also important in the termination of migration as it happens in neutrophils and cortical neurons migration. Now, this process is less known compared to what we now know about directionality, and that has been the focus of my project. And to study it, I use latent mesenderm migration as a well system. Latent mesenderm uh, the onset of gastrulation initially migrates towards the animal pool, but it never reaches it because it starts in the tumbling phase in which the migration slows down and that precedes the another migratory phase, which is the convergence. Now, the tumbling phase lasts roughly an hour, 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, as you can appreciate in this animal per view, the cell really don't reach the animal pool. And my question is what modulates the end of latent center immigration. And before we dive into the data, uh, there is an important characteristic of the zebrafish embryo. In fact, ECM it only starts to be deposited at this time. It has been shown that it is not important for latent center immigration. And so to answer to this question, so what, what regulates the, the end of the migration, I focus on a specific uh, component of the extracellular environment, which is the substrate. And my talk is divided into parts. In the first part, I will talk about the substrate that cells use and then where they modulate latent mesenderm migration. Now, in absence of DCM, the cells are in contact with the ectoderm and yolk membrane. And they're both possible uh, substrate. To understand if they prepare fair one or the other one, I use 3D fair analysis. I check the directionality of the protrusion, whether the, to which of them they adhere to immigration, and also if I force them to choose one of them, which is the one they would prefer. Because of time, I cannot show you the first two type of analysis, but they both show that latent mesenderm cells protrude more towards adhere to the ectoderm. And now to the third type of analysis, and uh, how do we force us to choose one or the other substrate in the case of the zipperfish, what we can do, we can inject mannitol, which is an inert sugar. And what does increases the space between the blastoderm and the yolk membrane, as you can see in this image. Moreover, it does not change the migratory behavior of these cells. So we can use this injection together with live imaging to really follow the cells and see which of the two substrates they are. As you can see in this latest snapshot in the quantification, the cell prefers to use the ectoderm as substrate which is also what the other analysis showed. Then having this type of analysis, I asked whether there's any difference between the cells that mostly use the ectoderm or the yolk membrane as substrate. And indeed, what we found is that the cells that use the ectoderm, but not the cells that use the yolk membrane, are those that move towards the animal pole with a high persistence. Overall, suggesting the latent center them using the ectoderm as primary substrate to undergo animally directed migration. And with that, we can answer the first question and we can slightly modify the second one and ask whether ectoderm modulates latent center migration. If you think about the substrate modulating migration, we could think that substrate is not homogeneous, it has different properties. And to test whether that was true, we used suspension, in which we took ectoderm from the animal or the lateral side, then transplanting the lateral side of a donor embryo, and had a look at how the cell uh, behave when they encountered the transplanted ectoderm. As so you can see here, the cell that encountered the animal ectoderm has had some probe to move towards the animal pole. And this is also visible in the quantification where we have a, a strong decrease of the animal displacement. And that then results in a decrease of the percentage of cells that reach the most animal part of the embryo before convergence. 
of velocity-adjusting the animal acting inhibits latemicentrum animal migration. So the ectoderm is different when we have a look to the migration of the latem them, but then we ask what's the difference there. And to answer that, we have a look at what happens to the ectoderm during castellation. And this is an animal per view, but we did the same with the lateral side view. Uh, I think you appreciate that the ectoderm thins over time, but it does not thin equally. In fact, it thins way more at the animal pore compared to to the lateral side, it actually decreased less than half of the initial thickness. Uh, we have already seen something similar early in the embryo at the onset of doming, in which uh, the center of the embryo thins faster than the margin. That's because the embryo has, is, less is less viscous at the center compared to the margin. And we wonder whether it was the same happening later in gasolation. Uh, to test that, together with David from the Haneso group, we created a model of the ectomet thinning, in which we impose less viscosity at the center, more at the lateral side, and then we pull the ectoderm and see if the thinning of the, in the model will represent what we see in the experimental data. And this is exactly what we see in pretty much one-to-one -one matching. And then given these results, we went back to the embryo, I wanted to have a look at the cellular level if there is anything that correlates with this uh, decrease in um, th thickness, uh, this possible different viscosity. And what we found is that the latter ectoderm is, has higher subtraction than the latter one. That's also true in the transplanted ectoderm. And we also knew from our previous work that the subtraction correlates with the, this, uh, with the viscosity. Overall suggesting that ectoderm tissue properties are patterned along the animal vegetal axis with the animal ectoderm being possibly less viscous. But if that's true, can we actually modulate the and migration by simply modulating the, the properties of the tissue? And we tried that by modulating cell contractility, we increase cell contractility in the animal ectoderm or decrease in the latter one before transplantation and then have a look at the, at the migration. And so you can appreciate you now the cell normally migrate when they encounter the animal ectoderm with higher contractility, but they have troubles to move animally when they encounter the less contractile latter ectoderm. And this is also visible in the quantification, showing that it's enough to actually modulate the contractility to fully invert the properties of the ectoderm in modulated lateral and migration. Finally, we wanted to know what makes the difference, what creates this difference between animal and lateral ectoderm. And to have a look at that, we had a look at the transcriptome of this animal and lateral ectoderm. And what we found extremely interesting is that the lateral ectoderm expressed several components of different signaling in pathway among wind, PCP, wind, and PMP. Especially in the case of BMP, the other ectoderm express CORDI, which is a BMP inhibitor. And we know that BMP is important for gasolation because if we fully remove BMP, this, the embryo cannot undergo convergence. And then we wonder, does actually absence of BMP also alter the tumbling phase? And to test that, we remove BMP from the embryo. And indeed, what we saw is that now the cells, they fully invade the animal pole, mostly clashing with the future head. That's what we will not normally see. Uh, now the question is, is BMP in this case setting the difference between animal and ectoderm? Uh, to test that, we went back to our transplantation essay. Uh, we took BMP, uh, we took um, animal ectoderm for a BMP morphine embryo, and then we transplanted in a new wild type embryo. So in this case, only the transplanted ectoderm initially didn't have BMP. And then we had a look at the, uh, at the migration of the latent center cells. I uh, hope you can appreciate that also in this case, latent center cells are able to migrate towards the animal pole. And this is also visible by the quantification, which we have really good rescue of the latent center and animal migration. Finally, we wanted to know if the water we see in the BMP morphine animal actor depends on the tissue properties. And we had a look at the subfraction, and indeed what we see that now the subfraction is not anymore uh, like the one in the well type animal actor them, it's pretty much overlapping with the one of the latter actor them, suggesting that BMP deficient animal actor them is more rigid and permissive to latent center immigration. 
And with that, I want to uh, end with a summary of what I'll show you today. Today, I show you that the ectoderm properties are parted along the animal vegetal axis, and BMP signal is important for that. And the latter misendoderm, the gasolation, uses the, uh, the ectoderm as primary substrate. And when they reach the animal ectoderm, they hold the migration. And that's what in, is the onset of the, of the sampling uh, phase. However, if we deplete BMP or if we increase the second activity in the animal ectoderm, we can restore the permissiveness to the latter misendoderm migration. And I want to finish with uh, thanking everyone, CP, people from the Hasinger group, especially Shin, Suryesh, Alex, David from the Haneso group with, for the mo model of the ectoderm, Sane from the SIX group, the imaging facility, fish facility, scientific computing, the NGS at the BBC, I'm happy to take questions. Ah, great, sorry, I keep turning my video on and off. There you go. Thank you, Stefania, that was great. Thank you so much. Uh, we've already got a question from Catherine Brown. Uh, she's asking, can you explain what you mean by self-fraction? Uh, sure. So the self fraction is mostly when you label the interstitial fluid at the cells. In an image, you mostly see how much space you have between cells. Higher the self fraction, less space there is, so more cohesive is the tissue. Lower the self fraction, more space is between the cells. I'll say what we showed uh, a couple of years ago is that that actually correlates with the viscosity, where tissue with the highest fraction have a higher viscosity because mostly they create more connection between cells and that increases the viscosity of the tissue. I hope that was clear. Yes, thank you. And, and sort of following up from that, so thinking what's the what's the molecular or cellular basis for this, this difference in cell fraction? So, um, what we've seen is that actually the cell, the Cell cell contacts, the, like the, the amount of cell per meter engaged in cell contacts is different between animal pore and lateral side. And pretty much at the lateral side, the cells are fully engaged in cell cell contacts. And that most likely create a more cohesive tissue that is really hard to compress. Because yeah. I mean, it's a really tissue. While the, the animal pore, they think that is more loosened. And that gets stretched over time and kind of allows the spinning that we see. Uh, and what's what's the mechanism behind that? What would you speculate? Why what controls so, the amount of content? So what we know, for example, later on in convergence, that BMP actually can control CSA addition by controlling cadrins. So the reason why you have the converge towards the dorsal side that is a cell addition gradient that is cadre mediated. So one possibility which you still have to test is actually that the, ca the cadrins, most likely cadrin is somehow that regulated or the strength of the addition is that down regulated at the animal pole. And that will fit to what we know with the BMP. Mm -hmm. So is that a direct response to BMP or is that somehow indirect? I mean, mm, uh, that's, Bit more, it could. I, mean, I think at the moment we don't know. No, I don't think we even know from the work on the converger whether it's direct or indirect. We know that it's BMP dependent, it's actually um, the amount of BMP makes a difference in this case. But whether there is through the con transcription control or through other means of BMP, that we really don't know at the moment. And uh, I, I mean, it would be really hard to guess also because BMP controls several things at the same time, so. Yeah, thank you. And the other question I had was if you change the size of of the egg, so it, of the uh, site, so if you sort of um, suck out yolk or put in more yolk, so what, how does that affect the, the migration and there and how does that affect mm. the properties of the ectoderm? Uh, so, so question, we haven't done it. I mean, it's removing yolk is without bursting the yolk is not the easiest thing to do. What I can say, what I've done in the past, uh, but I didn't do it for the long and nice about it, that I inject commit in the yolk. So I deflated the yolk and the cells still move towards the animal pole. 
So you per se, you really don't need to have any contact with the yolk or any like tension in the yolk to move towards any pole. Whether though the migration is exactly the same, that I would know. For that, I would need the more firm analysis of this of directionality, speed, uh, and for wherever. But yeah. Then per se, I mean size of the embryo, we have variation size of the embryo that's is not um, like important per se. I think it scales throughout. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thank you very much for your talk.